Hey, welcome back to Reddit Cheating Wife, the best channel for cheating stories. Like and subscribe to the channel for cheating stories like this. My wife cheated and lost. Let's begin with the plot of this narrative. I, 27 male, grew up, like most men, believing that the one is out there. That if you play your cards correctly, your soulmate will emerge out of nowhere and you'll ride off into the sunset. I met a lady when I was 19 years old. Brie, as we'll name her. While I was in the service, I met Brie via common friends. Brie was adorable, eccentric, and seemed to be an all-around nice girl. Sam, her buddy, felt it would be a fantastic idea to bring us together as a pair. I'm not sure what her motivations were, but I liked her and she liked me. Brie was visiting Sam for a few days, and I had just returned from leave in my home state, so the encounter was unavoidable. We all ate lunch together. Myself, Brie, Sam, and Sam's husband, whom we'll call Jim. This event was nothing out of the ordinary, but once Brie returned home, she messaged me on Facebook and we hit it off. After about three weeks of communicating with Brie, she asked me an unusual question. What would you do if I were pregnant? Before I get to my solution, let's perform some arithmetic. She was in her partying years and slept a lot. I discovered this much later in the relationship, she had a boyfriend a month before we met. I was adopted, so adopting a child felt like a no-brainer. My response was what seemed to be the correct thing. I'll adore the kid like it's my own. As it turned out, she was experiencing a number of pregnancy symptoms. She took the test a week later and got a positive result. I stuck to my promise. I'll look after this youngster. There was a three-month gap between this discovery and her decision to travel out to see me. During this time, she was highly erratic, seeking to persuade who she believed was the father to commit and help her care for the child. He didn't move one inch. Instead, she selected me. Yes, I see why remaining with her was a horrible decision now. I was naive, in love, and certain that she was the one and that she'd change her mind eventually. I married her so that the army would pay for her birth, and the rest, as they say, is history. But we all know it wasn't the case. The second year. Two years in, I noticed something odd. Some man, let's call him Ron, was loving every post she made and commenting on every picture of her kid. This looks strange. I had left the military and was working in security at this time in our marriage. My lizard brain linked the links one night while working, and the gut sensation followed. Now, I'm not one to act based just on suspicion, I want evidence. I'd get off work at 4am since I was working at a nightclub that night. She'll be sound sleeping. Every night before bed, she leaves her laptop on the living room sofa downstairs. The strategy is coming together. When I arrive home and sit down on the sofa, I see that the laptop is still there. I open it and try two password guesses. It's our daughter's birth year. I visit her Facebook page. I browse through the messages. There you have it. Six months of talking with a man called Ron. Some of the dialogue is flirtatious. Some of it is nonsense about how worthless I am and how much less of a guy I am. The hardest thing was learning that this person is who she believes is the biological father and that she is attempting to enlist his help. I scroll and scroll and scroll till I can't take it any longer. I grab the laptop, carry it upstairs, and place it in front of her, the screen flashing in her face. As she gradually awakens, I remark, we'll speak about this in the morning, and head back downstairs. She usually gets up at 7am, but she didn't get out of bed until 9am they were probably expecting I'd fall asleep on the sofa. She starts by claiming that it was merely pleasant conversation and not technically cheating. I called and informed her that if she did this again, I was leaving. I was about to say if, but I knew better. When would be the correct answer? This is when I put my strategy into action. I dropped out of college to pursue a career in my industry, and I made certain that everything opened under credit was in her name. I started by saying that my hometown had a superior economy and that we'd be better off there. It took two years of persuasion, but it was successful. Nothing was in my name, and we were planning a trip to my hometown in six months. We arrived in May, and I sent her home to visit the following month. I knew what she was going to do and who she was going to do it with. The day before we went, we met a man via Sam, and I realized right away that she was interested in him. She began behaving strangely again three weeks after returning from her visit. Other people taking precedence over me, putting things off, and growing aloof. Now that I'd spent two years arranging the dominoes, I simply let her knock them down. I made certain that I was unemployed, had nothing to my name, and was at home, where I could rely on relatives. I coerced her into saying she had cheated, and the dominoes began to fall. I stopped any cash from being transferred to the account and depleted it in order to petition for divorce. She couldn't take half since I didn't have anything. I didn't have a job, 
So what kind of lifestyle did we have that would necessitate paying her alimony? Everything was in her name, so even though I was financially responsible for some of those payments, the divorce was lengthy enough to ruin her credit. I gave her everything and made many sacrifices to raise her kid, but in the end, she suffered the most. In my profession, I am now incredibly successful and regarded. I'm not interested in marriage, but there are plenty of ladies in my life. Life is wonderful. I'm still in touch with the daughter, and Brie often flirts with me in an attempt to win me back. I'm the child's sole father, and I have no plans to become an ex-father. Even while it is emotionally appealing to be with the child more, I know better and have other possibilities. Story 2. Me, 39 male, with my wife, 37 female, of 9 years, she cheated again, after all we went through. I don't want to be married anymore, but can't let go of my family. So, my wife cheated on me a few years back. It was a nightmare. I won't go into too much detail, but it was much worse than most of these. I was absolutely demolished. But I believed her when she said it was simply a poor mistake that was out of character for her and that it would never happen again. Plus, we had kids, and I still loved her. So we figured it out. Because things occurred the way it did, sorry, no specifics, I was putting myself in danger by remaining. But it began off really well, then it was very nice, and then it was just acceptable. We didn't actually maintain working on things, which is why they dropped off like that, although we often spoke about completing the work but never got around to it. Things had supposedly become so terrible for her that she decided to establish a relationship with her friend's spouse. I found out today because his wife discovered it and planned to inform me first. Supposedly, things never progressed beyond kissing, but who knows. It doesn't really matter. They were looking for a good time and location to and, allegedly, hadn't found one yet. Anyway, after all of this nonsense, it really doesn't matter. She crossed a lot of red flags. I get the impression that I don't know her at all. The person I thought I loved would never do anything like this. That's what I believed the first time, but after seeing how torturous and dreadful she made my life then, I'm confident she'd never do it again. She would never do that to our children, who adore us both and want us to adore one other. But, of course, she would. She was also disgustingly about it, so I'm still reeling from it. My inclination last time was to struggle to keep her. This time, it's to turn off all emotions for her and begin moving on from her immediately, as if it were a horrible dream. I'm not having too much problem losing her over this since, after all this time, I still don't know who the she is. But it's the fact that I don't get to see my kids every day that bothers me. I know everyone says this, but being with them is without a doubt the best thing in my life. I wish I could be there every day. I don't want to lose out on half of their childhood due of my wife's selfishness. I don't want children to have to figure out why their parents don't live together. That's not the life I desire. Thinking about that makes me want to vomit. What's worse is that neither of us can afford to move out. So I'm caught in this position that seems to be exactly what I want, but it's missing its heart. I have to be with her every day, and I have to put up a good show for the kids. This is really awful. We could have worked on it if she had been a grown-up and simply informed me things were becoming bad enough that she was having ideas about someone else. We've already shown that we can. I've previously shown how much I'd go through simply to be with her. But she didn't even care about me or my kids enough to do it. Instead, this is my new normal. Correction, I forgot about the question. How am I going to get through this? Update, if nothing else, by speaking with a lawyer one-on-one. -on -one. She wants to consult with a single lawyer in order to complete an amicable divorce. I believe we can do so because I believe we can be nice to each other throughout our divorce, but it wouldn't hurt to go into it with my eyes open after consulting with my own lawyer. I've been toying with the concept of figuring out what would be the happiest path for me to take in life. Right now, it doesn't seem possible to reduce my time with my kids in half since they make me happier than anything else, but I know there's a lot more to consider. It's frightening to consider living on my alone, with additional costs, loneliness, and misery. I'm sure I'd grow accustomed to it and be grateful for the freedom. However, it still seems to be incredibly dismal and nasty. I'm aware that remaining with my wife may be just as dismal and miserable, and perhaps for a far longer period of time. I despise having to choose between two kinds of garbage. It's now paralyzing me.